What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 23 of Value Town. I'm Rush Jam Man V, and joining us today is my man each and every week, my co host Trump. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello. All right. And then returning uh, as a guest to the show, and I can't, I'm pretty excited to actually have these two guys actually talk about Hearthstone some. Uh, we have Ray Nod, popular streamer, awesome player. What's up, buddy? Hey. Awesome. It's good to be back. Yeah. So today, guys, we got a lot, uh, a couple good topics. We're going to be talking about meta. I feel like we talk about meta every single week, but the meta kind of changes every single week, so it kind of warrants it. So we'll, we'll kind of talk about just what's kind of um, going on in the landscape right now, and then we'll take a closer look at hunter and shaman. Uh, and particularly, we'll we'll kind of revolve the discussion around Raynaud's hunter, uh, current hunter deck, and then when it comes to shaman, we'll do Trump's uh, free to play shaman. But we'll talk about how to, with a, the with a hunter, how to beat it or just how to play against it. And then from the shaman, we'll talk more about just how to play the play the class and play that particular deck. Um, but let's start things off, guys. Let's talk about some some meta. So uh, what are you guys seeing right now in the current meta game on the ladder? <clears throat> well, it depends on the rank you're at. Um, but in Legendary, it seems like it's only been a mix of Control Warrior, Hunter, Druid. It's like those big three. And there's a mm-hmm. bit of Miracle Rogue. That's yeah. mostly it. It's like an occasional Shaman, but it's rare. Trump, what are you seeing? Uh, ranking up. Right now I'm in rank two. And that means I'm playing uh, low Legends, typically, although I hit some of the like single-digit Legends also, like super rarely. Really? Wow. Good old matchmaking, And uh, <laughs> Let's see. I'd say I honestly... At the top level of ladder, well, mid top level, uh, I see everything. You see like priest and paladin and uh, priest and paladin more rarely, but I do yeah. see them. Okay. Um, what do you think is the most difficult? Or what do you think is the the best? I guess um, deck that's running around, or the most consistent deck right now on the ladder from a winning percentage standpoint. I like right, Druid, right but okay. honestly, it's the answer is always Hunter, assuming it like you're a super computer program to play it. But like for most people, I think it's like Druid. For me, it's Druid. Um, okay. Control Warriors not bad either, but okay. Trump, what do you think? I think the um, I think the answer to that question will vary every day. Well, very week to week because mm-hmm. it depends on what else uh, the majority of people are running, really. So yeah. I can't give you an answer. Is yeah. my answer? When, in terms of warlock, you know, one of the things that I've, that one of the few classes I feel like that have a huge variance in the type of deck you can play is warlock, because you can play that control handlock, or you could play the aggro zoo and and slash murloc. Uh, what are you seeing in that in terms of warlock? Which one? Which one are you seeing more of? Oh, that high rank it used to be pretty much handlock every time a couple weeks ago, but yeah. lately I've honestly seen more zoo than handlock. Oh, it's only like the like the players between rank like two and five have been seeing are the ones that are playing handlock occasionally. Hmm. The reason okay. for that is like about one in three matches right now is hunter, and that matchup is really bad for handlock, so that's why you're seeing more zoo. But the matchup isn't like that much better for zoo. It it's like still sixty forty in hunter's favor. So I think no matter what warlock deck you're playing, you're gonna have trouble against hunter. And uh, more of the legend players are like because of the prevalence of hunter at high ranks right now. Mm-hmm. More more players are playing the zoo deck because it has a slightly better matchup there. Okay, Trump, what do you think? Um, what are you I seeing more? Zoo, I think zoo has a favorable matchup against hunter uh, as point one, and maybe it's sixty forty in my opinion the other way. Uh, and I forgot the rest of the question. Oh, just just, just generally what you're seeing more of. Uh, while you're oh, ranking this... up at rank two, like I said, I see uh, most everything. I've seen a good amount of rogues. Um, oh no, warlock. Warrior wise. control. War- warlock. Warlock wise. Oh, sorry, warlock. Yeah. Uh, the aggro warlock is uh, the zoo warlock is more prevalent. Although okay. uh, I'd say like if I had to give a rough estimate, like three fourths of them, mm-hmm. and then one fourth are the handlock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm kind of seeing about equal whenever I'm playing the warrior. One day it's like it's like all handlock. The next day it's. It's all zoo, so it's yeah. Just that really, really depends, depends on the day. Yeah, totally. Does it feel coin flippy to you guys though? I mean, I know with a warrior, like I, 
I was talking to Monk, and I, I think I've been playing it kind of wrong lately. But, you know, how I molly, at least in the past, has been a little bit dependent upon what kind of, you know, Warlock it is and optimally mulling again for it. But um, have you have you guys felt like the, the mat or that class, you know, just at least going against the class, whether you're a hunter or you're a shaman, has been uh, a little bit, I mean, has it affected your mulligans or really felt like a little bit of chance in your mulligans? Or no? I mean, yeah, it's annoying to, like, like the, the kinds of cards that are good against Handlock are the exact opposite cards that yeah. are good against, like, Zoo. But I think that, uh, I get how it can feel kind of coin flippy, but I think the right way to approach it is, at least the way I've been doing it, is to just always assume they're aggro because, uh, <clears throat> like, you don't need Hex until, like, turn 5 or 6 anyway. If you're, like, if you're playing Shaman and they're Handlock, you're not going to need it for, like, in your opening hand necessarily. Um, but, like, if you... Uh, a hand like uh, I guess how do I put this <laughs> it's you need to mulligan like their zoo because if you don't you lose that matchup straight up mm -hmm. um, yeah that's how I feel that's good I completely agree with that the good news about yeah. playing shaman at least is that the best card in the deck uh, Earthshock is the best card against both decks yeah mm. that's pretty well it's good against both is it better than lightning storm against zoo okay second best card <laughs> Actually, I, I'd How say it's debatable. It's pretty close. I think Stormforge Axe is in the top. Like, you want to keep the Stormforge Axe, the Earthshock, yeah. and the Lightning Storm. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Lightning Storm's really good against Handlock? It's terrible against Handlock. Yeah, okay. But you're talking about just against the two, two aggro. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting matchup, which we'll talk about a little bit more in just a sec. But, um, yeah, so pretty... Any Any kind of interesting decks that you've just run into? You know, like maybe some... You can tell it's like an experimental deck, but it might have some good ideas. Right on? I saw somebody playing Mage on purpose. That was kind of cool. <laughs> oh my god. On purpose? <laughs> nice. I saw, actually, I saw a Mage, that, you know, with those secret Mages. What do you think of those? You know, with the Kirin Tours and the, uh, the counter spells? <clears throat> so, like, how do I put this? It sucks that all the secrets are, like, not quite as impactful as they should be for three mana mm -hmm. um and the thing with like instead of playing ethereal arcanist or whatever the four drop guy's called you could yeah. play like uh play like a yeti a card that's going to give you good stats all the time instead of playing a kieran Mage, you can play like a harvest golem which is just going to have good value all the time it's, mm -hmm. um it's like a high it's, it's like a high risk low reward strategy in my opinion so i think it's Probably not the best way to go with Mage. Mm -hmm. Mage is like a really good board control deck. It's it's has a lot of the same strengths as Shaman, honestly, and uh, a lot of the same good matchups, a lot of the same bad matchups. But yeah, I don't know okay. if Secrets is the way I'd go with it. Yeah, Trump, seen any any cool stuff on ladder or run into anything? Um, I'd say instead of uh, seeing something like extreme, I've seen incremental improvements slash changes, mm -hmm. which have been interesting. That's about it. Okay, any notable ones? Um, this is something that's continuously been developing, I guess, but uh, Druids are starting to bring back the Ancient of Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely been seeing that too. And it's, I mean, it's kind of like a stopper for Hunter, right? I mean, if you throw down one of those bad boys, and you know, maybe they have a Hunter's Mark or two and can remove some of the time, but they've, with Druid of the Claw, they're going to have so much taunt, right? That's... Pretty much just stops Hunter. Is that is that the reason for it or no? It's probably mainly what? against Zoo. You think it's okay, yeah, against Zoo too? Really yeah. good against Zoo. Yeah. The older the oldest Zoo list was like double. Yeah, there's nothing it was built to only beat Druid and Shaman, but yeah, there's nothing to remove it too. Gotcha. Yeah. Like the newer list can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. I think Ancient War is pretty bad against uh, Hunter though, in my opinion. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've been seeing Have some. Oh, go ahead. Or not? Uh, well, you, you pay seven mana, and like they, they always draw their deck. They're going to have one of their like three answers to it. And if you pay seven mana for a card that gets like Hunter's Mark, you die. Yeah, um, yeah I see what you mean. I've been seeing some ooze too in, in Druid. What do you what do you guys think of that? Uh, I haven't tried it myself, but I've uh, I tried out Harrison Jones, and I didn't like him in the mirror match. So I mean, I imagine ooze is probably like. A safer pick for that slot. I'm sure it's fine. I don't know. Personally, I don't play it, but mm -hmm. wouldn't fault anyone for doing it. Ooze is a pretty good card right now. Yeah, in my um, free-to-play shaman deck, I'm running two oozes, and that's not because it's uh, 
a low cost in terms of dust card, but just because I've run into so many classes that run weapons that mm -hmm. I'd say like the majority of the time the ooze hits, which is exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. And super impactful too, especially like if you're playing Hunter or something. If you get rid of their bow, it's it's a huge, huge difference in that matchup. But all right, why don't we move on? Why don't we start talking about some of these decks and then we'll get into to some of this discussion and uh we'll start off with we'll start off with the hunter deck and renaud this is your hunter deck that we're showing here uh cycle hunter and uh there's a little there's some variations to the hunter deck but i think the one that you're running right here is probably the you know the best one that i, I at least i i hate to face um so why don't you talk about the deck a little bit uh in particular things like elven archer uh stone tusk boar yeah so, like, originally I was playing cards like Misdirection and Animal Companion, cards that yeah. did stuff. And then I realized, like, everything that's not Eagle Horn Bow or the combo is just mediocre. Um, and I just want to play more cards that draw me into that. And I, like, the curve... Oh, here's, here's how this deck came about, basically. I was playing two Misdirections in that list I posted on YouTube, and I was playing, like, two Animal Companion. And then, uh... As some of you might know, I've been looking uh, into forming a team lately, and I was I did tryouts a couple like last week. I, I played like best of fives against like twenty different players that are top ten both regions uh, on ladder, like top twenties. Just like look through the thought process and stuff. And one of these players I found, his name was uh, Gara, and he is like a phenomenal player. He's top five NA and EU right now, hmm. and uh, he did that free of play on NA got top five playing hunter he wanted like a 55 and zero run wow. so um, nice. i looked into the, the list he was playing and it was like the major changes was basically like those four cards the two misdirections and the two animal companions mm -hmm. which were the cards that were underperforming for me the most in legendary i just didn't really know what to cut them for uh he was playing like two stone toast boar instead and uh like two squires and like he was playing loot hoarders novice engineer it was basically just like more card draw instead of those cards yeah and i like the idea i figured flare just because not only because the prevalence of the mirror match but like just because it's a one mana cycle I'd, I'd rather pay one mana to cycle a flare a cycle means to just like replace a card with another card yeah. it's a mechanic and magic um that's why it's called cycling but uh yeah so <laughs> flare does it for one mana novice does it for two i figured a one one creature is not worth the one mana so i yeah. basically my card my list is like five cards off of his but yeah so it plays flares like uh, the Stone Tusk Boar is just like super low curve, and uh, it only plays the two traps that are good, which is Explosive and Freezing Trap. I'm actually looking into cutting Explosive. It's probably like the worst card in the deck. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it, it's a solid deck. It's just uh, really cheap. It can use all its mana every turn of the game without really running out of cards, and it just finds the most important cards of the, of the deck as quickly as it uh, as it can. So you always have the combo. Yeah. With the Animal Companion, was it the randomness of what you would get? I, I flip Leoc 95% of the time. <laughs> yeah. When I play on ladder, they yeah. get offered 95% of the time. It's like, it's like the world's best arcane golem. Yeah, screw that. <laughs> right, right. Trump, what do you think uh, of this variation? Yeah, I mean, when I was talking about incremental... It's one of the things that passed me by is like, uh, oh yeah, 100 decks are running Stone Tusk 4 now, and that's actually something that is fairly recent. And... Um, I can't say much about whether or not it's good or bad. I defer to Raynad on that one, uh, since I haven't played this deck. It's um, it's one of the things about the deck. I, I honestly believe that it's the hardest deck in the game to play. Yeah, and explain, uh, explain that some because some people argue that it's the easiest deck to play. You know, just at least yeah, for beginners. Those have players a lot of are ranked sense. fifteen and lose with it all the time. It's like that's the <laughs> thing. It's the the way that uh, options work is like. Okay, let's say you're playing Druid, and it's, like, turn five, and you have, like, a Wrath and a Druid of the Claw and a Yeti. You have, like, three options, you know? You can play three different things. When your hand is, like, four one-mana cards, and you have three mana to work with, that's, like, 30-some of like, ways to play stuff that it's just... Between that and your hero power, it's, like, it's so many options. And the reason that it's hard is because the deck isn't very forgiving. Like, it's really low curve. There isn't a lot of damage. The games that you win aren't going to be stomps where you deal, like, 60 mm -hmm. damage. Yeah. Um, against a competent opponent, like you're gonna squeak out the win with like exactly the right amount of damage, or maybe one point over. So if you miss a point anywhere, like you lose the game. And I constantly miss, like anytime I misplay with this deck, I lose. And those are just the misplays I notice. I'm sure I misplay all the time, and I just don't even notice. It's like, it's it's just not forgiving. And since there's so many different options when you play a low curve deck, and with this deck, it's so it's correct to kill creatures, like 
just as often as it is to go to the phase. So that like adds another level of like. Oh, okay. You think difficulty. it's e- e- equal in that regard? Because I I always thought that maybe, I mean, it would be higher percentage that you'd always you'd go for the phase versus, um, you know, removing. That's probably higher that you kill creatures. It depends on oh, the turn. Okay. Before turn five, I mean, just like every deck in Hearthstone, I think you, every deck is a control. If they play Lepronome, it doesn't matter if you're an aggro deck. You can't afford to ignore it, or it turns into a one mana yeah. Pyroblast. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can't. You can't just ignore it. You have to kill all their little dudes so that your freezing trap gets the big guy that races you. And yeah. a hunter is more favored to win the longer the game goes. So it actually like benefits you to drag the game out as much as you can in a lot of cases. But sometimes you have to go to the face. It depends. Okay. Well, okay, I kind of wanted to do, the, you know, talking about decks, because, you know, in the past, we've just talked about the decks, kind of what these things are, are um, the, the focus, the goals, the main, the main kind of cards in the deck. But today, I actually kind of want to talk about play style, and in terms of now on the ladder, so I think a lot of people would like to know how to play against it. Uh, so we'll take the approach of, instead of, you know, playing the Hunter deck, you get a chance to really look at it, and he talks through it really, really well. We're going to actually kind of flip it, and we're going to talk about how to play against the, the hunter, and maybe some folks can have a little bit more success than just just having the frustration on and uh, not really knowing what they should have done. So we'll go through each matchup, and we won't spend too much time on each, but let's just you know talk a little bit about maybe some of the fo- things that people should focus on when uh, you know playing in that matchup. And let's start with the druid. Um, we'll start with the druid, and Trump, I'll have you start first, and then we'll have both of you comment on, on it. What's the biggest thing to focus on? Like, what are things that molly against the hunter? Okay, well, depends a lot on the type of druid deck you're running. But generally, I'm going to speak to the majority, which is the ancient watcher types. Um, you want to probably get rid of everything under four mana. And uh, it's a pretty straightforward matchup from the druid perspective. You're going to you fail to spend your mana efficiently. You're basically going to lose. And as usual in every single matchup, try not to have uh, more than... I think in the Druid, you shouldn't have more than two guys out because the doggies will get you. Yeah. Uh, Raynon? Biggest focus uh, when you're, you're Druid playing against Hunter? Same thing as with, don't play defensively because that's how you get killed. Um, like one of, like the, Probably the biggest mistake people make is uh, playing Druid of the Claw with Taunt in the matchup. Over 90% of the time, it's correct to play it with Charge. Uh, assuming you're playing the Watcher, that's like a that's the biggest mistake that people make. Um, Wrath is a card I wouldn't keep uh, because it uh, your hero power does mostly the same thing. Wrath might net you like it's like one life better to Wrath the Leper Gnome than hero power it, mm-hmm. but it's not like that one life isn't worth the uh, chance of like drawing a better card like Ancient Watcher. So you shouldn't keep Wrath even though it's like cheap removal spell. I should a it's not an aggro deck. B you don't want cheap removal against this deck you want to like the druid deck is the aggressor in the hunter on druid matchup the hunter deck is the control deck hmm. okay yeah. i think you just blew my mind yeah that's actually a really great way to put it <laughs> awesome that's so, like where so many of the free wins come from it's like but yeah I don't yeah know. especially innervate something out it's like right cool okay um let's see well, I, I definitely have a question about just when to trigger traps and when not to you know that that question but it makes Makes sense to really discuss it. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about shaman next. And Trump, I know you've been playing a lot of shaman, so I might as well start off with you here. It's not a great yeah. match. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah. the matchup. This is one of the rare ones where it could be under one in three chance of winning, and that's a matchup that bad, just because the hero ability. And like whenever I'm streaming, people will be like, "Oh my gosh, Trump, you've got to press that hero ability there." But that's one of the things that generally actively makes your board worse because then the doggies get you. Uh, if you get the 0-2 totems, which aren't the taunt totem, then, and even if you get the taunt totem, it's sometimes not that good, um, then depending on the specific hunter that mm-hmm. you're facing off against, and that's even debatable. Uh, so the biggest thing is just realize that the matchup is highly slanted aggressively for the earth shocks and like the Stormforge axe is not even that great but it's still good because it'll kill three of their things um that's basically it comes down to hopefully they don't get unleash the hands what's what's your ideal molly like what's your ideal starting hand An ideal starting hand would probably be earth shock earth shock Stormforge axe no probably earth uh an actual guy like unbound elemental okay Raynon? 
Comments on that that matchup? Uh, yeah, the way that uh, Shaman can win that matchup, in my opinion, the best, just an early threat, like Unbound Elemental. Feral Spirit's actually pretty good, too. And um, basically, like, it, it's, okay, it's okay to have an Earthshock in your opening hand, but I would rather have Unbound Elemental. I think he's the most important card. Hunter opponent doesn't Hunter's Mark it, turn three, to, or kill it somehow, like he should. Uh, you can you can get like dog you know wolves set up behind it and uh, at that point it becomes really tough for the hunter deck to and that card happens to live you can actually race them pretty well um but yeah like it's it's pretty slanted against shaman but shaman needs to be very aggressive i think you don't want the removal spell then it's good but um the more important part is to actually like kill them and not just not be attacking till turn seven because that's not a game you can win mm. i think we're here i think we're here a common theme Okay, moving on to Control Warrior and uh, against Hunter. Reyna, do you want to talk, speak to it to some extent? Control Warrior against yeah. Hunter? Uh, yeah, it's an intricate matchup. Um, it's like, it mostly depends on how the Warrior Control player has his deck built. Some people are starting to play Defender of Argus or Shieldmaster instead of like, they're getting its controller being cut for uh, taunt creatures. Uh, and that makes the matchup nearly unwinnable but if they're the like the standard list of the, well, like one big game hunter a brawl that you know like Ysera, those are cards hunter uh, that matchup's actually pretty close mostly the from the hunter side you want a hero power as much as you can from the warrior side you want a hero power as much as you can instead of like and again the warrior deck is like the aggro deck in that matchup but it's mm -hmm. it's a really strange matchup it's hard to just explain most of the games i win are uh like turn uh, when, when you're close to fatigue is the hunter deck you like Leroy Comp, good value up until that point out of your bows and stuff, then you can win. But the most important thing from the warrior side is don't trigger traps. Like, just not attacking at all is usually right if they have a bow and a trap. Okay. You guys see lag on the stream here? I might. People keep talking can... about it. Yeah, let me take a quick break. Let me see what I can do something about it. I might have to re restart a stream on a different Twitch server. Break, and we'll be right back, guys. <laughs> 